All right, we are live. So welcome back to DAP University. So today we've got a lot to talk about in our live stream. I'm sure one of the first things that everybody was thinking about when they checked their phones this morning is like, hey, what's going on with the crypto markets? Why are we seeing a sea of red across pretty much all cryptocurrencies uh, for the past you know, few days? And in particular, in the last 24 hours, we've seen a pretty sharp leg down that does not look that good, especially in the short-term time frames. So we're going to talk about that in this video, uh, some potential reasons for why this is happening, and some likely possibilities of what's maybe going to happen next. Okay, we're going to look at that. We're going to look at a lot of other updates that have happened in this space since our stream yesterday. Again, we do these live streams Monday through Friday this channel. Just subscribe, turn on notifications. You're going to find out about those whenever we go live. Uh, we're going to answer some of your questions and a whole lot more. So if you're around here, hey, I'm Gregory. And on this channel, I turn you into a blockchain master. So if that's something that you're interested in, then smash that like button down below for the YouTube algorithm and subscribe to this channel. And if you want to have a master blockchain step-by-step start to finish, then definitely head on over to dappuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp to get started today. All right, so we can see we got people jumping in the chat. We got technically Dale, Madison, Kodia, David Stone, uh, Automatic Beats, uh, Venture Warrior, Jay Lee, uh, Cindy, Patrick, uh, Andre, uh, Andres. Hope I'm saying that right. Sorry. Um, all right, awesome. So let's let's just jump into this. Um, so yeah, crypto has been. Um, Looking a little bit rough for the past couple of days, okay? You know, we've seen a sea of red across the entire uh, board here. Uh, if you look at it, just check out a, you know, homepage website like coingecko.com, coinmarketcap.com, you can pretty much see this pattern of visualizing across all cryptos, this bearish trend over the past seven days, with this pretty significant knife downward in the price uh, within the past 24 hours, okay? So this is a pretty high correlation here. Uh, so let's try to dive in and see what uh, could be some potential problems here. Because in particular, you know, Bitcoin has lost uh, its 200-week moving average, which is a uh, you know a level that lots of people watch. Uh, we came down to this. I'll come back to that here in a second. But there's lots of signs that look pretty bearish in the short term. So let's let's look at this. Uh, so you know, all all the cryptos look pretty much correlated to one another. They also look pretty correlated to what's happening in the stock market right now. Okay, you can see uh, even on major stock indices like S and P 500, which people are tracking quite heavily since the beginning of the year, to try to see if you know, the stock market in general uh, is going to continue on in a bearish trend. Okay, or whether we can get some sort of reversal. So we're seeing correlation pretty much across all assets. So that leads you to think, okay, there's probably something going on uh, and, you know, a bigger picture that's pretty much affecting everything. And that's kind of been the story since the beginning of the year. You know, crypto and stocks have been pretty correlated to the downside, okay? Crypto's had its own set of uh, issues that have caused, you know, certain sell-offs to be worse than what's happened in the stock market. Of course, crypto is inherently higher risk already, but we've seen things like stable coin blow-ups, like uh, Terra Lunar Disaster, insolvency issues with major funds like three hours capital uh we've seen things like uh, the celsius disaster as well that has happened uh that has that's caused the has exacerbated the problem in crypto land uh, compared to uh, equities market so of course the broader economy has been sort of the main factor here affecting everything um from this the central bank of the united states sort of changing its monetary policy to one of tightening okay raising interest rates uh that is of course um hurt growth just in general okay uh talking about inflation being the enemy uh here it doesn't take a genius to see that inflation is a problem again I don't pretend to be some sort of macro expert here but that's been sort of the common enemy that people have been fighting so um have we seen certain things that have popped up that could cause uh some new sort of scares uh in the broader economy especially in the global scene and i think we are seeing some of that okay so one thing right now is we're hitting a pretty big problem with energy prices in europe okay so uh you know europe has had some gas rallies to record highs as the energy crisis uh pounds the region <laughs> that's a pretty i love that bloomberg headline that's awesome uh, it's not awesome that's happening. I'm just kind of chuckling a little bit at the at the at the headline. So, anyways, European energy uh, prices are soaring on the summer crisis, and then people are worried about what's going to happen with winter. Okay, we're seeing stories of like people who are uh, these astronomical energy prices for their you know businesses over in Europe, people's home uh, you know energy prices. If you're watching this from Europe, let me know if you're experiencing this. If this is um, you know, something that you're like, hey, yeah, this is totally a thing. I mean, I'm, of course, seeing it secondhand through the news. Um, let me know down in the live chat below if you are having this problem as well. So 
asking. Uh, like I said, globally, inflation has been sort of the common enemy. That we've been trying to fight to get out of the economic slump that we are in. And this does not look good, okay, in terms of fighting this enemy, especially with the, the, the uh, energy prices that are at right now. So I think that we are seeing some of this uh, along with just other general um, – you know, uncertainties in the marketplace sort of compound. I mean, I think one of the big questions people are wondering is the the recent uh, rallies, okay, that we've seen across um, crypto and stocks. Are they bear market rallies or are they trend reversals? That's a big question on people's minds. And, um, you know, I, I think we're starting to see some weakness in those to where they look more like rallies, at least people are worried about, and they want to pull their funds before we try to go back and reach new lows. So what are some possibilities on the table here? Okay, so some of the possibilities are that this could have just been a bear market rally, okay, and then we start to, uh, you know, go back and revisit lows or make new lows, okay. Um, well, actually, let's start with the first possibility. This bear market rally that we have sort of crested the peak of that, okay, and now we're headed back down for a new low, all right? Or another possibility is we crested, and we are going back down to make to hold the old low that we had before, all right? Or this is a dip, and we continue into an uptrend, all right? So uh, what, you know, I don't try to forecast too many um you know, scenarios. I don't, I don't try to predict the future too much on this channel, okay? Uh, I really just don't. It doesn't, it doesn't really do that much good, in my opinion, to have that sort of a strong conviction on short-term time frames because I look at the big picture. But if you want, you know, sort of my my two cents. If if I had if I had to place a bet, okay, of course not financial advice for you. If I had to rank these things in terms of likelihood, I, I would I would say that I don't know. I would say the least likely scenario on a short, shorter term time frame will be that we uh, correct and make new lows. Okay, I think there's a lot of significant support um, at the price levels we saw back in June. Um, I think it, it's it's still somewhat likely all right, that those levels were a bottom for uh, crypto in particular. Um, so, what? Why? You know. <laughs> At least, at least over the next few months. Okay, for one of the main reasons is we do we still have the Ethereum merge coming up next month, and unless you know uh, something terrible happens, let's say that the issue of censorship continues to rear its head uh, in in an untenable way uh, for Ethereum or something like that, or something blows up with the merge, um, then you know I I really just would not try to try to fade the merge going into it. Okay. Um, like unless something terrible happens with it, the likelihood that we're gonna you know come back here and make new lows, okay, before uh, the Ethereum merges is, I, I don't know, I just that 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 likelihood's kind of low in my opinion. Again, I, this is not financial advice for anybody watching this channel. I'm telling you to buy or sell any cryptocurrency based on this information, uh, but that's how I personally would look at it. Okay, so um, you know, well, you know. The merge definitely could be a buy the rumor, sell the fact type of event, okay, in the short term where you can see people sell either right before the merge or right after the merge, okay, which could, you know, cause us to to retrace a lot of this move here. Um, but ultimately, I do I do expect the merge itself to have a positive impact on the price of Ether over the long term. Now, in the short term, it's really hard to say what that's going to do right after the merge, okay? But as the network adoption continues to... Uh, you know, take off over time. Uh, of course, we do have the triple having coming in. Uh, the the supply side of ETH itself is going to be greatly impacted by the merch. Um, so, anyways, in the short term, you know, it, it's very possible this is a dip. Okay, uh, especially in ETH, um, particularly for what's going to happen with the merge. Uh, you know, coming up the max. I, I think it's really, I think it's too soon for people who are doing the merge trade of buy the rumor, sell the fact, because you know we're still about a month out. Uh, it's, it's, you know, if you think about buy the rumor, sell the fact, it's like a game of chicken. It's too early to cut bait, in my opinion, for that. So we'll see, we'll see. You know, I, <laughs> I'm not gonna like stand 100 percent behind this. Um, you know. With, with solid conviction, of course, I'm holding on for a much larger time frame, so the short term doesn't matter as much. Of course, I would always like to see uh, you know, the you know, price of the assets that I hold appreciate. <laughs> so there, of course, there's some bias there. But um, yeah, that's that's how I view it in the short short term without being too confident in the you know, short term convictions. Uh, that being said, so let's take a look at what's going on with some, some technicals in Bitcoin. Um, still watching Bitcoin, um, you know, from the technical perspective, again, I don't put a lot of stock in trade and 
you know, TA for, for too many things, but I do like to watch these key levels. Uh, people are watching, notably the 200-week moving average. Okay, this is a level that's always been hit in these nasty dumps, okay? And then, you know, sort of as we've gotten above it, we've usually held it a support for these longer trends. And so it looks like Bitcoin is defying us again. <laughs> okay, uh-oh, I just lost it. Let me just pull it back up on my screen here. Bitcoin is defying us once again, doing things nobody ever thought it would do. And we have now lost uh, that level. Okay, so let's see if we can get I, I, it, the likelihood that we would get back above this, you know, before the weekly close, which is going to be on Sunday, uh, is quite low in my opinion. But we could do it. All right, we could. But then again, you have to ask yourself, how significant is this, right? People have all these superstitious rules that they think crypto has to play by in order for it to, you know, work or to, have, to, to behave in a deterministic fashion. You know, some of those rules are that, you know, Bitcoin will never drop below its prior all-time high. Well, we did that, right? We did that, uh, you know, in June. Now we're back above it, okay? Um, you know, if, it's, if you say Bitcoin's never going to, you know, it's always going to hold this to support as soon as it touches it always. It always has a way of faking you out, right? So we'll see what happens. Um, but that is definitely a level that people are watching, and we have we have lost it. Somebody says, let's stay positive and say 2023 will be great. That would be nice. So much as they are in the UK. Mining rigs heat my house is but <laughs> yes, electric rays doubled. Yeah, that stinks. So, uh, anyways, you know, so yeah, the big big picture here is um, this this does look choppy for the short term. Uh, in my opinion, though, um, I, I would not try to you know, fade the Ethereum merge that's, that's coming up unless something really bad just happens. Okay, uh, from a technical implementation, or uh, you know, we get some we get some really bad news on on the censorship front or something like that. Um, I, I still wouldn't try to try to rule out the impact of the merge on the uh, crypto markets. Okay, so this is fair. It could be a dip in that regard uh, on the shorter term time frame, but I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't rule that out. So speaking of merge, okay, we've got, <laughs> continue to see updates from the Ethereum uh, proof of work fork. Okay, so yesterday I sort of made a video about this, or I made a, I thought it's not a live stream, how the Ethereum fork um, it's kind of turning into a disaster. So, uh, in case you're just tuning in now and didn't watch that live stream, or you don't even know what I'm talking about, see, of course, ETH is moving to a proof of stake. All right, we're going to have the merge. That's what it is. Like, we have a separate blockchain over here that's running proof of stake. You can't use it yet. And that's going to get merged back into the Ethereum that you're using today to basically replace proof of work, which is what Ethereum runs now. Okay, that's the merge. Two, two blockchains moving together. But there is a potential fork going to happen. Where essentially you're going to have two versions of Ethereum running after the merge. So one is basically the mining community organizing together to create a, a new blockchain after Ethereum merges. Okay, and then how you know that could cause you know two Ethereum's essentially to exist: well, a proof of work version of Ethereum, and then a mining, uh, sorry, a, st a staking version, proof of stake version of Ethereum. Okay, and so you know it's got people saying like, oh, like could I get free coins? You know what I mean? Just for having, um, you know, a, a Ethereum wallet with some Ether in it before the merge. Well, it might. We don't know if it's going to be worth anything, though. Um, but anyways, so more updates on this. That how this is not really, not really looking great. Okay, so uh, we've been following the uh, Twitter account for the Ethereum proof of work project. Okay, 
And, you know, we've seen a ton of backlash because they're freezing all these they're freezing all these contracts. OK, so, I, you know, I, I've talked about how, uh, you know, one of the biggest problems with forking Ethereum is like, you know, you've got all these applications on the Ethereum network itself. And if you like that's what gives it Ethereum value. You know what I mean? Of course, the software that runs the blockchain is valuable, but it's it's not it doesn't have the same value proposition without the same applications that people use in the agreement and all the cryptocurrencies that are on top of Ethereum, okay? And then the the social consensus, the social, um, you know, agreement that this is what we use. And also, like a stablecoin, for example, like a <laughs> circle is, is the issue of USDC. Like if you fork, uh, you know, Ethereum, you know, unless that chain, like we talked about yesterday, has real demand, like they're not just, they're just not going to honor USDC redemptions on that chain, right? Now, if it got traction, maybe they would find a way to do that, like we talked about yesterday. Um, but anyways, so to try to mitigate this problem of these apps and coins that are going to be valueless, okay, on an Ethereum proof-of-work fork, you know, they're talking about how they want to freeze uh, certain DeFi pools, okay, that contain Ether and also other uh, tokens, all right, that would be worthless. So... And this is where I think we're getting a lot of backlash is they're like, hey, this is completely centralized. <laughs> you know what I mean? Completely uh, picking who lives and who dies uh, type of scenario. Too much intervention from the get-go and how a lot of people just don't trust the fork before it is even launched. Okay. So basically, uh, we see more stuff like this. We recommend everybody <laughs> withdraw their ETH from all these pools before the hard fork. So the whole idea is probably going to take a snapshot of all the, you know, accounts and balances, uh, basically the entire blockchain state at a certain place where they're going to fork, and they're going to spend the new blockchain with that snapshot, okay? And the whole idea is, like, if you have funds deposited into some of these pools, like, they're just going to be frozen, and you can't take them out. So, they're like, hey, everybody, like, stop using this stuff now <laughs> on the main Ethereum network because you won't be included properly in the snapshot. So they've been releasing different, um, you know, they've been releasing different updates on this. So basically, EW Core released a second batch of contracts to freeze. In total, there are 24 contracts, about 287 uh, ETH, 287,000 EW tokens. Okay. So you can see the list of these here. Um, yeah, all these different <laughs> Ether Delta 2. That's crazy that there's still 16,000 uh, Ether in Ether Delta 2. So 106,000 Ether in, in XM. Uh, so anyways, uh, you know, we're, we're seeing we're seeing more and more people sort of not take this as seriously. And I, I've been saying for uh, ever since this started becoming a topic, which is I didn't think Ethereum fork was going to be very viable. And, you know, so a lot of excitement around for a short amount of time. But, um, let's see, we're seeing basically, um, we're seeing pretty, some, some pretty significant. Like, basically, you can go look at the IOUs for the ETH W tokens as they trade on a certain exchange. I think, like, Pol was it Poloniex? It's got it. There's some different exchanges that have listed it, but it's not. <laughs> it's kind of like dead on arrival, right? Uh, it's just, like, going down like crazy. <laughs> I'm bearish on ETH and W, right? <laughs> ETH W is a piece of, yeah. It doesn't 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 look great uh, before it even launches. Somebody says Ether Mine says they will not support each fork for mining. Yeah, I think I saw something like that. Let's just. Yeah, so this is based on coin market cap. Um, so largest ETH mining pool will not support ETH proof of work. 
Okay, so on one hand, Ethereum is preparing for a much awaited merge next month. But on the other hand, you know, detractors, ETH miner community, uh, want to start the ETH proof of work. Okay, largest mining pool, Ether Mine, has decided it will not be offering any dedicated mining pool for the planned proof of work network. Okay, so this means Ethereum will shut down all the, uh, I think I'm assuming that means Ether Mine, the, the, uh, Starting servers, thus the miners will no longer be able to connect their mining equipment to the Ethermine Ethereum pool. So, um, let's look at a couple other things here. Um, so one thing that has popped over the past, you know, week or so is we've seen some activity among the, the dog coins again, <laughs> so notably, uh, Dogecoin. Uh, so some of that's been due to the uh, rise of Doge Chain, the so-called Dogecoin Layer Two for DeFi NFTs and games. Okay, so basically, Doge Chain is a newly launched blockchain platform that lets users bridge over Doge to use it for DeFi NFTs and more. So it's not a traditional Layer Two scaling solution for Dogecoin as builds, nor are Dogecoin's developers or creators involved in the project. Okay. So, you know, we've seen what happened with Dogecoin, especially last year. Okay, it's absolutely rocketed up like crazy. We've seen support from people like Elon Musk uh, and others. Okay, we saw an 11% pump on the daily a few days ago. All right. Um, and, and Dogecoin really is a fork of Litecoin, okay, which is coming from Bitcoin as well. Uh, so it's kind of two ways removed. So it didn't natively support smart contracts out of the box. You couldn't really put apps on it. You could just send cryptocurrency around like Dogecoin, for example. Okay. Um, but the whole idea is that they want to build a layer two where they could, um, you know, work with Doge. So it's not a true layer two, all right, like Dogecoin. It's a separate network uh, uh, based on Polygon Edge, which is a custom blockchain software from Polygon, okay? So it's basically like a side chain for Doge. But the whole idea is you can bridge Doge over, and then that's the sort of the currency that you use uh, for that. So it's compatible with Ethereum virtual machines, which basically means if you can write apps for Solidity, okay, then you can, you know, write apps for Doge chain and, and build DeFi there. And then everybody with their normal tools can use, uh, you know, Doge chain. Like MetaMask, etc. So, you know, the, the Dogecoin community is saying that they essentially did not create this. Um, we had $21 million of token have been transacted in the last 24 hours time recording this. So we'll see what happens. You know, if anything, I think this could be we were already starting to see some of the hype maybe sort of peak and subside. Uh, this could be a situation, just like every new ecosystem that pops up, where, um, you know, essentially, uh, you know, people kind of come in and it has a hype cycle, then, you know, dies down. And, you know, then in the future we find out if it actually gains traction or not. But there's always, there's always opportunities whenever these new pop, you know, ecosystems pop up. So if you're a developer and you write smart contracts, you want to do any, you know, crazy DeFi wizardry, there's usually a lot of opportunity on brand new stuff because you're kind of the first person messing around with it. Um, and then you can sort of capitalize on that for a short time before, you know, the herd comes in.
All right, everybody, that's all I got for today. As always, smash that like button down below for the YouTube algorithm. Subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. There are of videos out so that more people can learn about blockchain. And if you're as fast at this technology as I am, you want to get your hands dirty, how can you get started today? You can go to my YouTube homepage. You find those free courses there. They like Udemy courses, but they're totally free. And if you like those and you went to the next step, or hey, maybe you'll take a master's shortcut entirely, I should become a blockchain master step by step after I finish, land your first blockchain job over at dappyverse.com forward slash bootcamp. You have to be an expert to get started today. About people with zero coding experience become real world blockchain developers in a matter of months. So that's all I've got. Until next time, thanks for watching.